about three things you need to do for your professional life and your professional goals for 2022. So first, you need to learn a new skill. In order to grow in our professional lives, we have to continue to learn new skills. Otherwise, our skills become stagnant and we become less and less valuable at what we do. We need to accumulate more and more knowledge. You can't just rely on what you did before. You can't do the same as last year. Um, every year, we should be trying to learn at least one new major skill. And honestly, this past year, I don't even know how many new skills I learned um, to develop my professional life. I have taken on coaching, which is something that I'd always wanted to be able to do. So I became certified as a coach. Um, so I can put my background in cell molecular biology and microbiology and all of my past experience to use in a new line of work, running my own business and providing coaching to other people. I have learned multiple new softwares um, and spent countless hours just um, <laughs> learning the ins and outs of this camera here because you know I grew up with a, a manual camera where we didn't have so many settings you know we had ISO aperture and uh, you know shutter speed <laughs> that's about it and now there are so many new modes and everything on these digital DSLRs and mirrorless DSLRs that there's an infinite number of possibilities that a picture can be composed or a video can be composed. So learning new skills helps to keep you both relevant and hopes, helps to increase your value as a professional. So think about when you're going to hire somebody to another example you know computer programming look at that it it's changed so much the coding language has changed multiple times there's so many different types of code that you can write you don't want somebody that <laughs> you know only knows basic now um, there's so many different ways that we can automate um, even Excel, you know, it used to be that you record a macro and you run that. Now there's VBO, you know, it, it, it's an amazing tool. And, you know, if you're not at least trying to learn something new every year or multiple new things, you are going to become less and less in value. Not only do you need to learn new things, but you need to keep up with the old things that you already know because those things are going to change as well. Counting systems change, photography changes, computers change, software changes. It's an ever-changing world and you need to keep up. So number two is you need to evaluate your goals. Your goals are going to change over time and every year you should reevaluate are you heading towards your goals? Have your goals changed? Has their trajectory of your professional life changed. Um, take for example me. Last year, um, right around this time, I was, I was thinking I really want to switch careers. I have been doing audit, um, financial statement audits, along with you know, a lot of other attest services, or if you don't know what that is, we do things like reviews, do a lot of things with financial statements. Um, I worked specifically for nonprofits, um, along with a few other types of entities that I'd be brought in to help out with government controllers or government contractors for the most part, but primarily nonprofits. Um, and I've been doing this for quite a while. I kind of started to get tired of it. I, I loved working with my clients, but I realized that I really didn't care for the work that much anymore. It, does, it no longer intrigued me. Um, so 
I started looking around. What else might I want to do? Well, I've been an accountant for a while, even though um, I uh, originally started off in science, I switched to accounting close to 10 years ago. But so I started saying, well, what can I do? I decided, well, I'll start my own firm through small clients and you know, just kind of, kind of uh, move along that way. But things changed. Um, I started to quit and you know, during that process, I was offered moving into our outsourcing department at the firm that I currently work. And I was, I was a little hesitant because I really wanted to go out on my own. I really wanted to be my own boss, but you know, the case was made that, well, this is a great way for you to learn if this is what you want to do. And we get somebody experienced with nonprofits to help us to start to grow our nonprofit business in outsourcing and you get to pick up those skills and it, maybe it find out that it might not be it might be something you love you want maybe maybe you want to stay with us don't even want to open your own firm or maybe it's something that you'll find out that you don't want to do eventually I did just turn in my resignation a week ago um, because I found out that this really is not something I want to do. Um, it's something that I can see myself possibly doing in the future for a few clients, a very specialized industry, but at the moment I want to step out and I want to help people using the coaching skills that I've learned and applying my background in science to developing content and coaching for you know health and wellness um, and personal development because I have definitely learned a lot of the about that in the past few years and that's the direction I headed. I came to the realization that after evaluating where I was at that my goal is really to be able to sell my own services, to interact one-on-one -on -one with people that I can help, whereas working in outsourcing, I didn't interact that much one-on-one -on -one with people that I could help. It was kind of a once-removed type of position, so didn't really fit that bill and my goal is to help individual people through coaching and then to help a broader audience through content that I develop and put out there through my blogs, my videos, and whatever else I might come up with. Um, so reevaluate your goals often and see if you are heading towards those goals and whether those goals actually fit the trajectory that you are heading. If, if not, do your goals need to change or does your trajectory need to change? For me, my trajectory really was what needed to change. So, number three is evaluate whether you're really an employee type or an employer type. And the third thing you need to do is evaluate whether you are an employee type or an employer type. Now, this can be either one of the most frustrating things you're going to do or the most satisfying thing that you can do. The reason I say this is that when you come to the realization that in your situation, being an employee is one of the things that fits your life, that best fits your goals, that best fits your particular attitude and desires. 
then you can enjoy that. You can enjoy the role of being an employee and vice versa. Um, when you realize that you want to be an employer and when you finally make that step, it's going to be very exhilarating, very exciting. The part where the frustration will come in is if you decide that, yes, I am more of an employer type, but I'm not ready to take that leap yet. That's the situation I found myself in. Um, like I mentioned, I spent the past year working in a role where I really wasn't very satisfied and I kept on thinking, well, maybe, maybe I learned to like it. Um, I really didn't. Um, and it was very hard for me to leave because I like the people I work with. I don't want to make people mad. I don't want to let people down, but I have for a long time wanted to be my own boss. I have for a long time wanted to be in charge of my own schedule in charge of my own ideas and executing on building my own business. So some questions that you might want to ask yourself to arrive at your own decision, whether you are an employee or an employer type might include, do I really need instructions from other people on what to do? Do I rely on other people checking in on me to get things done? Do I like the stability of knowing that every week, every two weeks, or every month, whatever your pay schedule is, that that paycheck is going to arrive and it's going to be a certain amount? Those are the comforts for many people of being an employee. You don't have to do your own, really your, your benefits research or any of that sort of stuff. It's all taken care of. You don't have to do, perform multiple roles um, because everybody has their one role. So those are the benefits and the realizations that you might come to if you are an employee type. If you're an employer type, you might be the person that is very self-driven. You're always going a little bit above and a little bit beyond what you really need to do to get things done. You might realize, see that you're always the one that people come to with questions. The people, the person that people rely on because they know that you're going to work independently and you're going to get things done. And if you're always getting assignments from other people, maybe it's because you are the employer type. It's that independence, that being able to work on your own, not having to ask too many questions, not people not having to check in with you all the time because you have that motivation, that drive to get things done. But you gotta realize that it's not just the drive because when you leave your job, the only person you're gonna be accountable to is you. So if you work well under deadlines set by others, it might not work for you. You're gonna to have to come up with your own deadlines and everything is going to have to be assigned a priority. You know, usually if, if you're starting your, your, your first business, your own business and you do not have priority set, you're, you're not going to end up succeeding. You, you need to almost treat everything as urgent because everything needs to get done because you're the only one doing it. And that brings me to another topic. As an employee, you get the convenience of a benefits being offered by your employer. You get the convenience of somebody else taking care of all the marketing, all the advertising. You get the convenience of all these specialized departments within your organization. And if you're gonna be the employer, when you first start out, you're not gonna have any of that. You're gonna to have to do your own marketing. You're gonna to have to figure out copywriting. You're gonna to have to figure out 
how to use the software that you need to use to run your business. How do you promote yourself? How do you put yourself out there? I know that that was one of the worst parts for me, thinking about promoting myself. And I used to be the person, we had to go to um, business development networking events. And yeah, I would go talk to a few people. I would get some cards and you know, by the end of the night, I felt really good. But every single time I went, I was like, I don't really want to go. And, you know, now that's what I have to do all the time. I have to find some way to reach out to people. And that's what I've been doing lately is just reaching out to people, you know, finding new ways to, to get clients, finding new ways to put myself out there. I never thought that I would be putting myself on YouTube. I never thought that I would be running Facebook groups and running advertisements. But as an employer, those are the sorts of things that you are going to be taking on when you start your business. So those are some things for you to consider. But I think it's good to know what type of person, what type of mentality you have because then you can settle into your position or you can plan your exit to start your own business. And knowing where you're headed is a very important part of your professional life, your professional goals. So the first thing is you need to learn at least one new skill during the year. You need to keep yourself relevant and you need to build what some people call human capital. Um, make yourself invaluable. Two is you need to evaluate your goals. Are you on track to achieve your goals and have your goals shifted? And do you need to change your tra trajectory? And then number three, is you need to evaluate whether you want to continue to be an employee or if you want to be an employer. Are you the type of person who desires and feels the comfort in being an employee? Or are you the type of person who really has that drive and that motivation and that desire and the commitment needed to be the employer?